All right, let's take a look at op amps again. This time we're going to look at a, a different uh, parameter of an op amp. So this time I'm going to have the same circuit. Okay, I'm going to have this circuit, but I'm not going to have any input. I'm going to ground the input. Okay, so we'll always have zero volts going in here. And so we should get zero volts on the output. All right, so let's put in an op amp. And, oh, before we do that, um, you can see that with nothing applied here, ground is measuring about, oh, it's bouncing around, but, you know, half of a millivolt, something like that, 500 microvolts, somewhere around in there. So I'm going to put it in an op amp. And uh, not only is it a little bit sensitive to my hand being over it, it's picking up a little bit of noise, but it's measuring very low. It's measuring minus 19 millivolts. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's not very good, right? All right, that's not zero. Let's put in this op. That, that op amp was a TL072. So the 072 is, is bad again. I'm not, I used to be really happy with those op amps. Now I'm not so much anymore. Uh, this is going to be a JRC4562. And uh, it's gotten better. It's what's measuring around minus nine millivolts, minus eight millivolts, something like that. Better. All right. Uh, this is our 5532. We liked that last time. Last time that was great. It's plus 4.4 4 and a half, four and a half millivolts. And uh, let's try a 4556. And that's measuring, oh, a little better, around three millivolts. And the last one is a 2086. That's that low noise op amp. And it's pretty good, it's measuring about two and a half, two and a half millivolts. So um, another parameter to watch out for. So. You know, one op amp is not always perfect and you need to choose what's available to you. Now, some op amps actually have offset adjustments on them where you can add a, a, a resistor and you can change the, uh, change the offset. In this particular uh, situation, uh, we could actually also change the offset a bit. If you look at this circuit, ground is going through a resistor but on this side, it's going directly to ground. And so there's a bit of an imbalance there. If you put a resistor on this side, you can make it balanced a little, a little more and get rid of some DC offsets too. So there's a lot of things you can do to, to balance circuits out to have, uh, to, good, to have good offsets. But the point of this video is, uh, you know, you take a look at a, a circuit like this and you say, oh, well, if I have ground here, I'm going to have ground here, right? And then you might be troubleshooting. Now, this signal here might get amplified later on, and maybe you have a volt offset someplace else. And you go, well, where'd that volt come from? Well, it might have come from the input uh, uh, offset of this first op amp, and it might have gotten multiplied in, in the circuit. So just be aware that, uh, yeah, ground is not always a ground. And op amps don't always do exactly what you tell them to do. Sometimes they have their own errors. Now, the measurements that I just made with these, uh, with these various op amps here, I'm kind of saying that, oh, these are the variations in the part numbers, but they might actually be the variation in the parts themselves. It may be that I, I take a 5532 and I measure a dozen of them, and we will see that uh, they probably vary from part to part. Um, so it's really, really important. If, if this particular parameter is important to you, it's really, really important to, uh, to do something about it. Um, so we'll end with one uh, an additional fun fact. Um, so when I was doing this test, I put in my LM358, right, the oldie but goodie. And uh, mm, this one now it's showing its age. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, um, this one is oscillating. Uh, now it's oscillating about a hundred, uh, 200 millivolts. It's a big, big oscillation. And it's a very, very fast oscillation too. Let me uh, reach across the camera here. Let me go around the other side so I don't mess things up here. Uh, let's do, uh, let's see what frequency this thing is. It's uh, oscillating at 32 megahertz. So yeah, 
Um, if you need a 32, 32 megahertz oscillator, there you go. <laughs> He's at 358. But uh, yeah, it does seem to be uh, uh, wanting to, to oscillate in this particular circuit the way it's the way it's configured with just ground on it. So uh, it's probably a, a, a fact of, of the uh, layout of the proto board and everything having straight capacitances and stuff. But uh, that op amp is not uh, is not um, what do they call it? Anyway, it's not very stable. Um, so I was kind of I was kind of shocked about that one. 